Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Saturday, January 7th, 2023. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Job has just gotten done listening to one of his friends, Eliphaz the Temanite, tell him that if he hadn't done something wrong, then he wouldn't be suffering. And if he wanted to get rid of his sufferings, then he needed to repent of his sin and set things right with God. Now we're going to hear Job's reply to Eliphaz. He is going to describe the intensity of his sufferings, and he's going to plead with his friends not to give him judgment and condemnation, but instead to be there to help him with compassion and understanding. Then Job answered, If only my grief could be weighed, and my devastation placed with it on the scales, for then it would outweigh the sand of the seas. That is why my words are rash. Surely the arrows of the Almighty have pierced me. My spirit drinks their poison. God's terrors are arrayed against me. Does a wild donkey bray over fresh grass or an ox slow over its fodder? Is bland food eaten without salt? Is there flavor in an egg white? I refuse to touch them. They are like contaminated food. If only my request would be granted and God would provide what I hope for, that he would decide to crush me, to unleash his power and cut me off. It would still bring me comfort and I would leap for joy in unrelenting pain that I have not denied the words of the Holy One. What strength do I have that I should continue to hope? What is my future that I should be patient? Is my strength that of a stone or my flesh made of bronze? Since I cannot help myself, the hope for success has been banished from me. A despairing man should receive loyalty from his friends, even if he abandons the fear of the Almighty. My brothers are as treacherous as a wadi as seasonal streams that overflow and become darkened because of ice and the snow melts into them. The wadis evaporate in warm weather. They disappear from their channels in hot weather. Caravans turn away from their routes and go up into the desert and perish. The caravans of Tima look for these streams. The traveling merchants of Sheba hope for them. They are ashamed because they have been confident of finding water. When they arrive there, they are disappointed. So this is what you have now become to me. When you see something dreadful, you are afraid. Have I ever said, give me something? Or pay a bribe for me from your wealth? Or deliver me from the enemy's hand? Or redeem me from the hand of the ruthless? Teach me, and I will be silent. Help me understand what I did wrong. How painful honest words can be. But what does your rebuke prove? Do you think that you can disprove my words or that a despairing man's words are mere wind? No doubt you would cast lots for a fatherless child and negotiate a price to sell your friend. But now please look at me. I will not lie to your face. Reconsider. Don't be unjust. Reconsider. My righteousness is still the issue. Is there injustice on my tongue? Or can my palate not taste disaster? Paul has made it clear throughout his letter to the Christians in Rome that God has always had one way for people to be saved. And that has always been, and for everyone, by God's grace through faith in Jesus, who sacrificed himself as the perfect payment for the sins of the whole world. That was the message that God proclaimed also to the Jewish people. That is how they, too, were saved. Unfortunately, much to Paul's and God's distress and sorrow, many of those Jewish people rejected that message. And Paul's going to talk about that in chapter 10 of his letter to the Christians in Rome. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God concerning them is for their salvation. I can testify about them that they have zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. 
since they are ignorant of the righteousness of God and attempted to establish their own righteousness, they have not submitted to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes, since Moses writes about the righteousness that is from the law. The one who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith speaks like this. Do not say in your heart, who will go up to heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will go down into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. On the contrary, what does it say? The message is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. This is the message of faith that we proclaim. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. One believes with the heart resulting in righteousness, and one confesses with the mouth resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, everyone who believes on him will not be put to shame, since there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, because the same Lord of all richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on him they have not believed in? And how can they believe without hearing him? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all obeyed the gospel. For as Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the message about Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Yes, they did. Their voice has gone out to the whole earth, and their words to the ends of the world. But I ask, did Israel not understand? First, Moses said, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. I will make you angry by a nation that lacks understanding. And Isaiah says boldly, I was found by those who were not looking for me. I revealed myself to those who were not asking for me. But to Israel, he says, all day long, I have held out my hands to a disobedient and defiant people. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.